Uh, hi, my name is Justin Hoffman. I'm uh, currently living here I'm from Los Angeles. I teach over at uh, a school in the Golden Horn called Pierre Haas University. Good place. Um, and I'll show you guys a little bit about some of the stuff that I do, some of the artwork that I've done in Los Angeles. And then I'll show you some stuff about uh, processing, which is a visual programming language. Um, I don't know how much I'll be able to get into it, but I'll show you some kind of tricks on how you can get uh, dirty with it right away. Um, and I apologize, one of my computers, uh, as you see the screen, is, uh, is broken. So I'm going to have to work on it there the whole time. Um, so I'm an immersive ambient artist. So I create immersive installations. Um, and I deal with uh, art uh, povera and uh, abject materials similar to Tasso before uh, with a lot of my installations. And uh, so here's an example. And I kind of like this thing, but uh, we'll see how this works on there. This is an immersive installation that I created that's uh, four channels. Uh, you stand inside and it's uh, projected through uh, hardware meshing. So it's a physical filter that it creates, and it creates a 3D drag on the videos. It was a, uh, it was a miniature installation that I set up through a house in Venice, California, uh, and ran a miniature camera through the installation that I created. Uh, oh. What the hell is a miniature camera? I used a, uh, it's a, Three, it's a, what is it, uh, it's called a ice cube cam. They were using it for like blind date. If you guys are familiar with a lot of like the reality TV shows yeah. in Los Angeles and they would put them in like the minivans and things like that. And they're about this big. And you can pilot it and then oh, it, it was on a, uh, it was on a cord, like a very long, uh, you know, lion cable. Yeah. So that's how I recorded it. Okay. And here's what the uh, immersive installation looks like. Uh, three, three channels of it at least. So uh, obviously these would be, uh, there's four walls, but if you can imagine the uh, three different walls that you've been looking through, so you feel like you're moving through this installation. Well, you know, I'll play it one more time. Yeah, it is a space. Is this a space? Yes. Yes, so this, each, uh, each view that you see is one wall of video. And you're standing inside hardware meshing when you're viewing it. Another uh, installation that I created. It's called Torrential Static. I used uh, cardboard boxes. And uh, here's some installation pictures. <coughs> uh, painted them white, like a matte white coloring, and uh, this uh, DVD sometimes has some hiccups, so let's, let's hope that it goes through a few of them. There's more images of it on my website, but uh, essentially stand in the center of it. And it's four different channels of video playing, and it's one uh, abstract narrative, an ambient narrative while you're watching it. And uh, here's a uh, example of the video itself. I'll, it's kind of long, it's about eight minutes, so I'll cut ahead to the, the fun parts of this, or the pretty parts. And uh, I used uh, crushed glass that was dropped in front of the camera. And the audio track of it is 15 different channels of static. Key static, uh, airplane tower static, radio static. And that's what created the, the audio part of it. And then the, uh, what you're, the visual you're seeing is actually crushed glass or crushed mica. And uh, then I, I uh, discolored it. I won't ruin the ending, so. 
in a different way. And then, um, and so, and uh, here's an example of uh, one of the uh, video installations that I uh, created in Los Angeles. I created a uh, immersive live VJ events. Uh, in this event, we had uh, very similar to VJ Fest Istanbul, and actually, thank you, Buju. This is uh, really cool, um, by the way. And uh, it's very similar to VJ Fest Istanbul, except I had a location at the LA uh, Exhibition Hall, and we had over 22 projectors, and we filled two rooms of all uh, video. So what you see here actually goes all around the room, and there's uh, pictures of it in Flickr. It was, it was a pretty nice event. Uh, so. Here's a close up of one of the, the pieces. This is the picture I showed you before. So, all right. Today, today I'll uh, discuss processing framework with you guys. Uh, processing is an open source programming software that lets you get your hands dirty with programming quite easily. Um, it's a high-level Java platform, and um, it was created by the research at MIT Media Lab by John Media, essentially, in the beginning, and then taken upon by uh, Casey Reyes and Ben Fry. And they, they ended up uh, creating this really great framework online, and I'm not going to go to the web as little as I can because I don't have a great connection, but you guys should check it out. It's uh, processing.org. And there is tons of materials there for you guys to learn and see examples. Essentially, the entire book is online as well, while there's a, you know, a few books based on it. The good thing about it is once you get your hands dirty with it and get familiar on this higher level, you can start working on lower level Java. Um, or you can go into open frameworks, which is C++, which is really similar as well to processing. They're really powerful. and. Uh, the processing language is similar to like an action script. So like a flash action script, Mel scripting language, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, and there really are infinite possibilities with interactivity, with um, motion detection. A, a whole lot of other libraries are built into it as objects, so you don't have to necessarily learn the, the really hard part of the coding, and you could use these really nice features like live camera feeds and, and things along those lines. So I'll show a little bit about processing and then I'll show how, I'll discuss how it can be used for the live visual type performance. Um, here's one artist who uh, is pretty notorious. His name is uh, Robert Hodgins from Flight 404. Uh, he created, I think,